Um, ladies and gentlemen, we've heard that the UK's maritime cluster has tremendous growth potential but must address some challenges. Uh, in the recent report on leading maritime capitals of the world, London did top the table for maritime finance and law but is facing competition from the likes of Oslo, New York, Singapore and Hong Kong, as Dr Zakos described. Work needs to be done to raise awareness. The global economy heavily relies on the maritime industry and yet it barely enters the public consciousness. And this marginalization does have implications for the skills development that we need to fuel uh, maritime growth and competitiveness. Uh, we heard from Professor Gramanos that we provide leading, world leading education, but we need to constantly look at academic innovation. One issue that we haven't touched on this evening is the seafaring skills needed to support the maritime cluster. There's a whole range of jobs in the city for which these skills are essential or certainly advantageous in order to maintain competitiveness. In the light of the maritime growth study, it'd be also interesting to hear your views on the role of government in this process. What policies do you feel would be required and also the role of industry? I'd like to open the floor now uh, to your questions and generate some debate. Uh, we do have roving mics. Uh, I'm going to take the questions in threes to maximize the number that we can take at any one time. And if you could just briefly introduce yourself and ask your question and being con as concise as possible. I can see a hand up down here. Uh, Alan Grace of Nautilus International. I'd like to thank all the speakers for their contribution today. We've seen that this city of London, as prospered as indeed this nation has by combining uh, financial capacity with technical ingenuity. I've heard a great deal today about companies will go where the money goes, but won't the money go where the technology goes? And won't that technology only be developed by people and the ingenuity of people? And therefore, we can look to innovations in this country, such as we see with Rolls-Royce or Inmasat. And surely, technological innovation is what we need to combine with finance for the future. Do you agree or disagree? Thank you. OK, thank you. There's one lady there. Uh, Linda Korsha, I think there's an element that has been uh, missed out, including in your presentation there at the end there. Um, it's the fact that the, the UK maritime labour force has become completely extinct. The whole thing has gone to the world's cheapest labour. Maritime by its nature is the hardest area in which to have any sort of labour standards. So no doubt this is extremely competitive, but is it satisfactory? Thank you. One more, let's go this side, gentlemen over there. Thank you very much. Um, just by way of uh, improving the profile of the London's maritime cluster, could you give us any indication of how many people it actually employs and uh, what sort of income it generates for the British economy? Thank you. Thank you. If we take, do you want to deal with the technology and finance question, Costas? Technology has to be extremely competitive, eh? because it must be internationally competitive. Otherwise, it cannot survive. Uh, I believe that innovation has been offered in abundance here, without a doubt. Financing is, is, is one question, but then how competitive can be? How can you be competitive with the Far East or other countries? I mean, that's one of the problems here, and we have to think about it. I mean, if you look um, at uh, the, uh, the marine equipment companies in the 70s, when I started doing this sort of thing, they were very active. They were doing excellent business. Now I have my question mark there. Competition, innovation, competition. That's the only answer, simple as that. Then if you can become competitive, then finance will be there. 
and everything will be there. I mean, that's the, my, my view. Thank you. Nicholas, do you have any, well, anything I, 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 to add to that? Yes, I think, uh, I think the point on, uh, on uh, the, the shipping is also a business uh, where the la it's labor intensive. So I think the human factor is uh, very, very important. The human factor has to be trained, uh, educated, Unfortunately, in uh, the Western societies, we see less and less people joining the seafaring uh, profession. Uh, even in Greece today, we are facing a very large financial crisis, which uh, I think it has been in the press. Uh, it has tired everybody for a very long period of time. But, and still, you cannot get young people to, to go to sea mm. or in big numbers. And, uh, so I think uh, the, the problem that we are facing uh, is that we are uh, having less uh, personnel going to sea, uh, whereas countries like India, that's why I, I mentioned India, is going to be a very big shipping hub because they have a lot of uh, seafarers. Those seafarers, as they grow, they will become one day ship owners, captains, and then ship owners, and they will make their, their, their centers a hub. So this is something that we, we, we are trying to, to address. On, on this, on the last one, I have a number of students. We, we have 3,700 students from 152 countries. They work in, fi in 50 countries. But the interesting thing is in China, young ones, five young ones, they are in their mid-30s, 38, they have become ship owners. They came to the course. They, they studied at very good universities in their country. Now they have become ship owners. Is the time now we, last week I, I spoke with a student of mine in Calcutta and he told me, oh yes, I bought my fifth vessel. Yeah, that's how, that's the difference. Fifth vessel. But there is likely to be a, a shortage, isn't there? I mean, all the forecasts are that there will be a shortage in seafaring officers. Um, and certainly as the, as the, as the uh, world trade does grow, then I think it could be quite a, an acute problem. So and, I think it's something that, that we do need to try and address this whole area of, of, uh, of this recruitment. Is, this is a very, a very serious problem because uh, we have a technology and innovation which are very important. But you have to have the people that are able to keep yes, up exactly. uh, with this technology and innovation. Mm. Mm. Um, if I could, I don't know if you have the figures off the top of your head, but in terms of the, 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 the maritime cluster, it, the maritime cluster of, of London and the importance, it's all in the maritime growth study. I knew I should have brought a copy with me tonight, but it's, it's all in there. I don't remember the numbers. So I don't, I don't remember them off Sorry the top about of my it. head. We have a, but I can easily find it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think Not the, Lord, now. the Lord Mayor mentioned it in his speech uh, a, a bit earlier. But I think. Telephone to him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Question there, front row. And then, yeah. Jeffrey Sterling. Um, through history, transport, shipping, has been the servant of delivering world trade and increasingly in a global even more so today and just in time delivery. How important, therefore, do you three think it is that London absolutely needs to be part of the European Union, or as it has been, the leader, the leader, as this country always has been, as has been stated in the past, the free trade leads to freedom. Okay, thank you. There was a question. And then a lady behind. My name's Kenneth Stern, and I spent my working career in the marine insurance business. Um, I want to say that it seems to me that un the United Kingdom has definitely, in recent years, lost the bulk of its um, old uh, trade in shipping, in direct ship owning and, and shipping. On the other hand, the ancillary business, such as insurance and um, shipbroking and so on, if anything has grown and continues to grow. And for instance, um, marine insurance for 
For more than 300 years, London has been the world's leading centre and continues to be so. I don't know if the panel agrees with that. While I'm on the subject and looking at the illustration here, um, <clears throat> it shows what looks like the old Lloyd's Coffee House, where Lloyd's was founded in the late 17th century. Uh, and then there's the latest new Lloyd's building. When that was completed, a senior underwriter looked at it and said, hmm, so 300 years ago we started in a coffee house and now we finish in a percolator. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And behind, I think, there was a question. Hi, my name is Karen Birmingham. I've worked in shipping for eight years, not recently, but it seems to me the issues are around image. Um, I, know, I appreciate the work and actually this lecture because there is an is image problem with shipping. It's not very visible, it's invisible. If you look on our British waters, and I'm a sailor, the lack of shipping, if you go to Singapore and Hong Kong, the, the harbours are full. And so therein lies, I think, a, a challenge, is how do we, this is very exciting about uh, the law firms, the education, but it's back office stuff, it's actually not visible. And I think that is where there's an issue. And I'd be interested to see what the industry is doing to raise the profile of shipping in the mainstream. There aren't, there aren't reality TV programs about shipping, because 95% of the trade that comes in this country is via shipping. Most people think it's by air. There is an issue about the challenge. How is, how is the industry challenging that? OK, thank you. Visibility, the visibility of the shipping industry. Well, I think, I think uh, th this is, uh, this is uh, I think, a, a very valid point. Uh, the majority of uh, the things that uh, we see around us have been moved by, by a ship at some stage before they came uh, uh, to, w to where they are. And uh, still, uh, the mainstream people do not see a ship. They, very few people identify with a ship. Unfortunately, very few people know that 99.99% of cargoes every single day are moved safely. Uh, from place to place, and the only time that uh, a ship uh, gets some press is usually bad press mm. when you have uh, you know, a problem or an accident. Uh, ships are the largest uh, mobile uh, man made objects, so they're huge. Uh, they're about a thousand feet, it's a, or, or more, is a VLCC manned by about 25, uh, 25 people, and it has to navigate through very difficult uh, weather conditions uh, at all uh, 24, time, 24 hours a day. So it is not the, the, uh, what uh, shipping offers to the world economy, it's not appreciated. And, so uh, how do we get the world economy to appreciate it? Uh, well, I, I think uh, it, is, uh, it is difficult because it's a fragmented industry. Mm. You do not have an industry which is based in one place uh, in the world. I think uh, the IMO and Mr. Mitropoulos uh, has tried and, and, and made, made efforts to put shipping uh, on, on the map uh, more and more, but it's, uh, it's an uphill battle. Kostas, anything to add? On this? I think we have to move to the universities, and not only to, and to the schools perhaps, and to mm. the universities. There is the place where you can put your case. What do you expect? Why they, they should read about shipping when they, they have their problems at home? So you have to educate very early. Events have to be organized in very early days, in the high school, and early in the university, first, second year undergraduates. That's it. OK, thank you. Who, what about the marine insurance? Issue. Well, the, the, I think marine insurance, uh, London maintains uh, uh, its uh, predominance and, and, and it's growing. And uh, mm -hmm. I think, uh, so yes, perhaps uh, in 50 years you have to build a big, even bigger building. So <laughs> you might have to move to the SAR. <laughs> yes. Okay. So approximately 28% of, in, of, of international marine insurance. It's a London. very big concentration. Yes, very yeah. well, yeah. we, exactly. And we don't yeah. have the names now. I mean, there were mergers. Yes. Now you have companies. Anyway. Okay. I've saved the most contentious to last then about the, uh, the European Union. Who would like to comment on that? I'm not going to comment. No, I, I think the, the, the stance on, from, from shipping is that we are for 
uh, we are against protectionism, against quotas, and we are for free trade. And I think uh, um, you know, the European uh, uh, Union or the, the common market, as it used to be, is for free trade. So I think uh, naturally, uh, you know, ship owners are, are, are uh, supporting uh, yeah. a, a huge country like the United uh, Kingdom uh, to be tied to this okay. Uh, agreement. Okay. And, and I would go further. Uh, if there is a Brexit, touch wood, uh, what is going to happen the financial city of London? So many foreign banks. They, they have their headquarters, international headquarters here. Mm. What they are going to do? I think the city recognises that it would be quite disastrous for, uh, for Frankfurt will be happy. Yes, <laughs> other places would be happy. Um, OK, I think we can probably take three more questions. At the back, or oh, middle there, and then another hand at the back, and then one towards the middle on this side. Yes. Grisha Stukalin, APL. With advance of modern technology, communication, and international nature on every single transaction, whether you buy something in the shop or whether you charter a vessel, is the physical location of maritime cluster becoming less important than it used to be? Okay. The physical location of? Becoming less important. Okay. Thank you. Um, we had another one, yeah, behind. Martin Coles. I'm the Chief Executive of the Marine Society and Sea Cadets. I have the privilege of leading an organization with 14,000 young people aged 10 to 18 who are interested in something maritime. Given all that you've said of the challenges of the maritime sector, what would your recommend, uh, advice be to those 14,000 young people in terms of their careers in the maritime sector? Okay, thank you. And there was one over, over that side, yeah. Adrian Munden from the uh, UK Chamber of Shipping. Um, question about the flag of a vessel. Uh, ship owners can, of course, at least in this country, choose to register their ships with any flag state. Um, how important do you think uh, the UK ship register is uh, and its size, which is painfully light at the moment, in, in supporting uh, the UK maritime cluster in, in the city? Thank you. Okay, physical location, is it important? The physical location, does yeah. it matter that we're physically yeah. here? I think that, that's a really crucial question, the physical uh, presence. Uh, if you ask me, I do believe in, uh, in a system, in a cluster, where everyone knows everyone, where they communicate and they have direct linkages. And this is the concept of the cluster. We have seen, of course, the Baltic exchange has changed drastically and dramatically since 1971 when I came here and I used to go there to see people. It's another world, uh, which I accept, but I haven't answered your, your question. Um, there are, of course, very many things that can happen, but for instance, in, in the chartering world, it doesn't mean that you have to be located in London. You can do this in other countries. But the wealth of information is normally in one place. I mean, if, if you have the headquarters of XYZ, for instance, law firm of XYZ, um, uh, she broke in firm, for instance, then you, you have the, the wealth of information which you need to make the decision. Now, if the city of London does not have ship owners, and the ship owners are here, there, and everywhere, it doesn't matter who they will be, the wealth of information will stop to be here. Um, and the same applies for law firms. It means that 
activity will be transferred in other places. The same companies will go elsewhere. Are they going to survive there? In order to survive and in order to succeed, you need business. Is, do you have enough business when you go, for instance, to Athens or to Dubai or to whatever? It certainly helps I'm in not, relationship building, I'm, doesn't it, I'm if you've actually got people it is, physically It is a together. human, it's a very human yes. business. So yes. I think uh, there were, in, in the 90s, when you had the craze of uh, the dot-com companies, there was a lot of money lost and invested and lost by companies uh, trying to have uh, chartering vessels or buying vessels online. Yeah. So, you know, shipping eBay sort yes. of thing. Uh, it doesn't work because uh, to charter a ship, you have to know the owner. It's a big responsibility. The oil company wants to know who is the operator, who is the owner, to kick the tires, as they say. So yes. I think it is important uh, to, to, be, to be close. I, of course, technology helps uh, if you travel, you have to travel the world, but uh, the base is important. And it's also very important for the, for the company's morale. You, know, you have to have your headquarters, you people have to visit it, uh, it has to be a, a center. Okay, very quickly, Nicholas, the 14,000 young people, what, were, what would be your advice to them? Well, I think th this is, uh, you know, th I think this is a very, very important number and uh, congratulations uh, on that. I think it will be important for them to start by visiting some vessels uh, so they can, uh, they can see what uh, uh, you know, real life is on a ship. Uh, and if we could help as a company or an as, as an association uh, to organize uh, trips like that, for, uh, I think uh, we'd, be very, very, we'd be very happy uh, to do so. And uh, it is a very interesting business. It's a global business. It's a business that will bring you from uh, you know, all these hubs I mentioned. Uh, you will end up with people, brokers in shipping, start working from Singapore. They go to Copenhagen. They end up in Hamburg. And uh, so they live a very, very international life. And I think this is very good for young people. OK, and finally, do we need a, a UK register? Do we need a UK shipping register? He will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think, uh, I think every country uh, has to have the pride of having uh, its flag flying on, on uh, at least a number of its vessels. So I believe uh, uh, there should be one. Uh, I think it will be a pity. The nation with the longest tradition in, uh, in modern times is seafaring, uh, not to have uh, the, the Union Jack or the, uh, uh, you know, uh, going going around uh, around the world. So I think yes, my answer would be certainly yes. Well, and it also allows other policies like it for the UK the, with the tonnage tax and linked to recruitment. I think has been a, a very good initiative. Um, I think we're going to have to leave it there. So uh, thank you very much to our uh, our panelists, uh, Costas and Nicholas. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.